All right, guys, we're going to talk about our Halligan a little bit here. Um, has three different ends on here, so just a little refresher of the titles and names of them all. Uh, we've got our forks. This in here is the ads. And then we have our spike or our pick. They're all used for something, and we just need to know which one and what they're for for the right application. That'll help us get in. Big part of knowing how to use a Halligan is knowing how uh, they work and the force and leverage that they uh, will apply for you. When we're trying to decide mechanical advantage and figure out the most bang for our buck on that, we need to take a little, little bit of math here. I know they said you never use it, but today you will. Uh, we have a 30 inch Pro Bar, that's what we use for uh, the Fort Worth Fire Department primarily. Uh, so we're taking our 30 inch length and we need to divide it by the prime surface width that we're going across. So if we have the tool in place and we are prying down or up, we have a 30 inch bar divided by two inch wide ads. Our mechanical advantage is 15 to one, if my math is correct. If we have the bar oriented the same way, but yet we force it this direction and we're taking our 30 inch bar prying against a six inch surface, which is the length of the ads, we now have five to one. So we can generate three times more power by an up-down motion than we can going across. The takeaway is though, that with a two inch ads, we only have two inches of pry there. Whereas across the length, we have six inches. So we need to know when it's time to use the most mechanical advantage and when it's time to switch. Once the tool is set, we wanna start with the most mechanical advantage. Do the most damage to the door we can, which is an up-down, finish it off with something more side to side. That way you have a little bit longer stroke with the tool. All right, now we're going to go over uh, forcing doors with our tried and true irons. Uh, we're going to talk about both inward and outward swinging doors, right and left handed. It's essentially the same sequence, but uh, we're going to have a few tweaks depending on what kind of door we got. We'll talk about that. So when we go to use our irons, we got four steps we're going to take in our sequence. We're going to shock our door, we're going to gap our door, we're going to set our tool, and then we're going to force. Uh, when it comes to shocking our door, on an inward swinging door, we're going to hit it in three spots. We're going to hit the top, we're going to hit the middle, we're going to hit the bottom. When we do that, the purpose of that is to A, loosen those locks up if they're weak, maybe even open our door, and B, by the flex and the give in the door, we can roughly figure out where those locks are located. Let's go ahead, we're going to shock our door. All right, so this door had a lot of flex at the bottom, a little bit at the top, and it's pretty solid in the middle, so we know our latch is somewhere there in the middle. We have two different ways we're going to gap, and that's going to depend on if we have a wood frame or a metal frame door. Wood frame door, remember, that's when we're going to go back to our baseball swing. We're going to take our spike, and we're going to drive that spike as deep as we can to the frame, and then use the ads end to force that door. So if it's a left-hand swinging door like this, we're going to have to swing lefty, drive that spike as deep as we can to the frame, and ride down on that ads. Right-hand swinging door, drive that spike as deep as we can to the frame, up on our ads. On a metal frame door, what we're going to do after we shock it is we're going to use our ads and we're going to get behind the door jam here, put the ads behind that jam, and we're going to gap this thing down. When I gap down, anytime we make progress, we want to capture that progress with the edge of our striking tool or with the wedge. We never want to give anything back to the door. If you need to, if this door is pretty tight, I can have my partner come in and she can give me just a few strikes on this to set my tool and then I can gap it. All right, strike. Right. All right, set. All right, my tool's set at this point. It's in there pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this thing down to gap my door. To keep this tool from rolling out, we actually want to push it in first and kind of square it up, and then we'll push our handle down. The further we get back on this tool, the better, more mechanical advantage we're gonna get. So I'm gonna gap this thing down. And Skyler's gonna capture our progress. So we got our progress captured. This point after we've gapped our door, now we're going to set our tool. We've got two different options here. First one is we can go bevel to the door and it can curl those forks around the frame itself. If we can do this, is actually a good option, maybe even our better option, is we actually get more mechanical advantage and we get a bigger push with it. The only reason why we wouldn't do that and maybe we may have to go bevel to the jam is if we have too tight of a gap here, we're going to need to work those forks around that door to get to get a purchase point. So we got a pretty tight gap here, so we're going to go that route. We're going to go bevel to jam, we're going to work, work these forks around there. 
But we're doing this right here. I'm the one in charge. The person running this Halligan, you're the one in charge. You're the one calling the calls. So I'm going to tell Skyler to either strike or drive. When I say strike, that's just one hit. If I say drive, that's continually hitting. He has the freedom just to keep on going until I tell him to stop. A few safety concerns, a few things to mention. When you're running this Halligan, try to go with an underhand grip on this side where he's striking, go with an overhand here. The reason we want to go underhand is it kind of naturally tucks that elbow in. If we go overhand, it kind of drives that elbow out and he may whack it. Another thing, make sure you keep your hand in far enough that if he overstrikes, it doesn't whack the outside of your hand. For the striker, when you're hitting, you want to cross your tool. We don't want to strike in this direction, parallel with our ads, we have a lot better chance of missing. So when Skyler comes in and strikes, he's going to make sure his tool is crossed with mine. So I'm going to get my tool set and we're going to go ahead and continue. All right, I got a good bite on this door. So I'm going to have Skyler strike, strike, strike. All right, so when I get to this point where I can let go of this tool and set that good, that's a good indication of this time to drive. As far as how far I'm going to want Skyler to drive, I'm going to drive this thing to the crotch of my forks, right there on our forks here. I want to drive it to the middle or inside of this jam. That's a good depth gauge that I'm in far enough. All right, drive. Stop. All right, we got our tool good and set. Now, I'm going to force this door inward. When I force it in, I'm going to hold my tool here. So that's going to give my Vegas gap. Skyler's going to come in and capture our progress. We want to give it a good explosive motion forward. Get on the end of our tool to get our most mechanical advantage, and we're going to pull. All right, so I'm going to hold there. Skyler's going to capture my progress. All right, now I'm going to bring my ads in. I'm going to run it behind the frame. So it's just like when you gap, ads in behind. Now we're going behind the frame. The real tough door, I'll go down with it first, more mechanical advantage, and then to finish it off, I'm just going to go toward the door right here. That'll finish it. Alright guys, outward swinging doors, uh, we know uh, from building construction we're primarily dealing with commercial occupancies on outward swinging. Uh, big, big part of this is going to be sizing up your building. The occupancy type is going to tell us a lot about what type of force we need to do and how much leverage we need. Um, knowing the type of lock, whether it's uh, panic hardware, dead bolts, drop bars, that type of stuff, uh, we're going to get from knowing our buildings, time of day, all those sort of things. Uh, when we're doing an outward swinging door, we need to make sure that we're working in between the jam and in front of the door. The whole goal is to create a big enough gap to get a tool behind the door so that we can start putting outward pressure and force on the door. Same principles are going to apply. We're going to shock the door. A good shock on an outward swinging door is to strike the door itself. Hopefully you dent this and open up a little purchase point right here for your ads to start working. So shock, gap, set, force. To gap the door, we're putting the ads in in and when we're using a little up down motion on this to actually crush the door back we're going to capture progress set our tool and then force we're going to bring jake in to help all right so we're going to simulate on the brassky door because it's solid steel we're going to simulate the shock because it's a uh, stronger steel than our tools uh, so baseball swing into the door good all right i'm coming in with my tool got my ads in where I want it, I'm going to call my strikes just like uh, on the inward swinging door. So strike, strike, drive. Set. All right, tool is in where I want it. Now I need to do this move, motion that is a crush move. So it's either up, down on the bar, using our most leverage uh, with the ads, crushing the door back. Jason to capture progress with the wedge while we do that. Our goal is to get a gap big enough to get the wedge in behind the jam in the door. All right, you ready? Yep. All right, wedge is set. We have a really nice gap right there, big enough 
to get our ads end of our tool through there. So we're going to line the ads end up with the gap that we've created. Now we just need to strike the tool in deep enough. So again, I'm going to call my strike. So strike, strike. Tool is set, now I just need to force. The force on this is gonna be working at the end of the tool, so I have the most leverage. It's an out motion. Uh, we want to push tools where we can, but sometimes pulling gives us uh, the only option that we have. Strong pull uh, backwards, make sure to brace yourself so you don't trip and fall. Okay, we got the tool to here. Now we can finish this door off by either taking the tool to the wall or pushing down. Now we have the door open. Strike. Strike. Drive. Stop. Okay. Strike. All right, y'all, so now today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, dressing up our halogens. There's a few things we can do to these halogens when we get them from the factory that'll make them a little more user-friendly for us. So first things first, we're going to start with the forks. All right, you can see here in this hand, I've got a factory halogen. In this hand over here, we've got one that we've tuned up. So you can see from the factory right here, there's a pretty pronounced bevel, pretty sharp. What happens is when we go to drive that in a door gap, it can start bouncing back on us because it doesn't want to quite get over that hump or this inside hump. You can see over here on this halogen, we've ground that down so it's a lot more of a gradual curve. Now there's nothing to hang up when we go to drive it in that door gap. No kind of hump to hang up on. So this makes it a lot easier. Uh, another thing we've done to ours, as you can probably tell, if you've been to the training, we've put a notch right here on our halogens. What that notch is, it's in a direct relation to the crotch of the forks. So when we're driving our tool in, we're talking about inward swinging doors, if we drive the crotch of our forks or this notch, which is a lot easier to see when we're standing above our tool, to the middle or inside that door jam, it gives us great mechanical advantage. One more thing we can do also, you can see this mark here. What that mark is, it's an inch and three quarter in from the tip of our ads. What that is, that's the thickness of a commercial door. So when we're doing uh, an hour swing into our commercial, that's another really good depth gauge to know how far to drive that thing in when we're, before we hit the jam. So then we can start getting that crush motion, make sure we get both sides of that door, that we're not just skinning the outside of the door, then we can get behind that door and do an hour swing door. Uh, one more thing when it comes back to forks, we talk about popping off doorknobs. If you can widen these forks out just a little bit, if you can make them about an inch to an inch and an eighth wide, that gets them over the shaft of that doorknob so it's easy to pop those doorknobs off when we talk about doing some of the through the lock stuff. All right, hope this helps. All right. All right, guys, we're going to go over doing in, uh, all right, start that over. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to nerd out on Halligans. All right, no, we can't do that. <laughs>